Welcome back to Maintenance Monday. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to refresh, revive, and breathe a new lease of life into your disc brake rotors and your disc brake pads. Let's get to it. The process we're gonna go through is ideal if you've noticed a drop off in brake performance, or perhaps your brakes have overheated, or maybe you've been contaminated with some cleaning products or a little bit of oil. So it's a great process in order to eke a little bit of extra life out of the pads before having to buy new, or perhaps you just need to make it to the end of the month to payday before investing in your new brake pads. So we'll take you through the list of the things that you need to do this, starting with, some sandpaper. I've got two options here, a slightly more abrasive and a slightly smoother one. We've got some disc brake cleaner, we've got some clean cloths, we've got a metal tray to keep everything contained neat and tidy, we've got some gloves, and then for a special bonus um, method and technique, we've got a lighter because we might be setting things on fire. We'll get to that in a second though. The components that I've got in front of me, I've taken from the used parts being here at GCN Megabase because they're not really parts that we're gonna use on you know, the bikes that we're riding all the time. So the brake pads, these were removed from a bike because they're not working as effectively and they seem to be quite noisy. So presumably some naughty person here at GCN Megabase has contaminated these ever so slightly with some cleaning products or perhaps some sort of maintenance or lubricant spray. So we're gonna try and clean these up. And then I've got two different rotors here. I've got a little 140 and a 160. So the 140, I've got to show you as an example of what happens to a disc brake rotor if some excess heat has been applied to it. So throughout the braking surface at various spots, you can see there's a slight tint and discoloration to the shiny silver surface. That is where it's got particularly hot because it's a smaller brake rotor. But also you can see around here, we've got quite a few fingerprint marks, some of them I've literally just put on here now, but it does highlight why it's good practice to try to avoid touching the braking surface of your rotors because a little bit of oil from your skin is left on there and therefore is gonna work its way onto your brake pads. So we wanna try and avoid that. Now this rotor is looking a little bit worse for wear. It looks like it's had a bit of a hard life. So we're gonna try and clean it up as best as we can and then it means we can get a little bit of extra life out of it and hopefully it will be nice and quiet in its operation. So to clean both of these up, the first things we're gonna do is take our metal tray and simply coat everything in disc brake cleaner or perhaps isopropyl alcohol you could use and clean it up using a nice clean cloth. Reason you've got a clean cloth because if you use an old oily rag, you're simply just gonna contaminate everything further still. Once we've cleaned everything up with our disc brake cleaner, our pads in particular, we're gonna take our coarse sandpaper, put it onto the flat surface of our cleaning tray, and then just gently rub that top surface to try and take that top glazed off layer off. And then we can go through the process of cleaning the brake pads again. So let's get started. Now this method isn't a surefire guaranteed way of making old worn out contaminated rotors and pads back to new again. That simply isn't possible, but it should make them back to a sort of state that is suitable to be used again and get some extra life out of them. But if they're particularly badly contaminated or badly worn out, then it's still worth trying this process, but chances are it might be a little bit too far gone and just gonna have to trip down to your local bike shop and buy new, unfortunately. Um, and you have to learn your lesson. So don't contaminate any brake pads with oil and other components like that. Otherwise, you're gonna be buying new stuff on a pretty regular basis. So, having sprayed the disc brake cleaner all over, can then start carefully working our way around the rotor, focusing on the braking surface to get that as clean and free of all contaminants as possible. Just take your time, work your way around, be methodical, and try and keep everything as clean as you can, keeping your hands off of that surface that you're cleaning. Already you can see all of those fingerprint marks have gone straight away. Now, understandably, the heat marks where the metal is being heated and then allowed to cool down, you can't simply clean that away with brake cleaner. But what we could try to do is very gently rub some sandpaper just over the surface to try and give it a, a, clean, a clean layer to start with. We could do the same on the inside edge. Now, if this rotor had been contaminated with a bit of oil, so the next thing we could do 
is actually place it back in here, spray some of our disc brake cleaner or a little bit of alcohol on, and then we can get our lighter and light it. And then the little bit that we've sprayed on there is gonna burn off. And then the theory behind it is it's gonna burn off the little bit of oil that's contaminated it. So let's give it a go next, shall we? Now, when you're doing this, it's important to make sure you take all of the necessary safety precautions. So we do have a fire extinguisher pretty close to hand. So keep that, then away we go. There we go. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> oh my God. It'll burn off pretty quick. So as the last little bit of disc brake cleaner is burning off, You've got to remember, this rotor is now going to be incredibly hot. The reason for that is it's trying to get rid of all of the contaminants. So we need to allow, allow this to cool down, and then we can repeat the same process that we did at the start. So once it's cool, a little bit more brake cleaner, clean it out with our clean cloth, and then that rotor should be good to fit back onto your bike, and it's hopefully going to work as it did when it was much closer to being brand new out of the box. Um, our brake pads is pretty much repeat the same process. We're gonna, let me move our sandpaper out there. We're gonna first clean them up as best we can, and then we're gonna slightly sand down the surface. We'll use the more abrasive sandpaper first. We only need to be light, and we need to make sure we put the sandpaper on a flat surface and hold the pad as flat as we can, because we don't wanna make that braking surface uneven. All right, first things first, let's clean this up. Now I'm going to use just the corner of my cloth here, so I know I've just got one of the corners, which is have the dirty brake pads on it that way, and then the rest of the rag is pretty much clean and good to go. So even just, even with just cleaning and wiping that over, we can see it's starting to look a bit better already. So same again for this one. So now at this stage, our brake pads are back to looking clean, good to go, and almost like they were when they were new. But if you're, you found that your brake pads weren't working so well because they were contaminated with something, then chances are that will have worked its way into that top surface of the brake pad. Hence why we're just about to sand that top layer off and then we'll clean it up again with our disc brake cleaner. And just like we did with the brake rotor, if you're feeling particularly brave and like you want to give it a go, that's when you can spray some cleaner on and then let it burn the oils and the contaminants off. So let's get to that now. That is looking pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do, we'll take our sandpaper out, place that to the side, disc brake cleaner, get all that horrid brake dust off of there, take a clean corner of our cloth. This is why I said keep one, clean, one corner for the dirty side. It's actually looking pretty good. Now, if you look closely, you can see how much difference there is between the one I haven't done and this one, which is looking much, much of a smoother, cleaner surface. Just a little bit, we don't need to go overkill. And then three, two, one, away we go again. Having used such a small amount of brake cleaner, you can already see most of this stuff is pretty much burnt off already. If you're doing this stuff at home, my best advice would be to have the necessary safety equipment and do it outside away from anything that is flammable. But we're doing it in a controlled environment here, so should be no stress. Done. Now, just like your brake rotor, it's gonna be incredibly hot. So we're gonna move this to the side, like so, give it a minute to cool off, and then we can set to working on our other brake pad. Now, if the braking surface of the rotor is looking like it's in quite poor condition, something you can do to help try and revive it is take a little bit of sandpaper or wet and dry paper and just gently rub all the way around, trying to keep the paper as flat as possible. Now, we're not trying to put um, rub any particular large amount of material away. We're just trying to simply scuff up the surface ever so slightly 
and remove some of that contamination and dirt build up at the same time. So they have it, a low cost and simple method of how to breathe some fresh life into your brake pads and your disc rotors. Now I have to say it isn't a guaranteed successful method, so it's gonna vary depending on the condition of the brake components that you've got, but I do think it is an effective way to eat some extra life out of the stuff and avoid you having to buy new components straight away. Hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, subscribe to GCN Tech, hit the bell icon to turn on your notifications, and do you know what? Give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments section if you've ever found this method has helped um, save you buy some new components straight away. Oh, and also you don't have to set it on fire every single time. It's just a step I like to add in to make it as effective as possible. Right, see you later.